Hello, good afternoon everyone. So in this uh, video I will start talking about non-linear pricing, about standardized and uh, non-standard uh, quantity discount. So we talked about bundling as, as, as a um, type of non-linear pricing. Another very popular pricing technique especially when it comes to uh, B2B uh, buying from a wholesaler or a manufacturer, what happens is there are two um, uh, or three, uh, two mainly from manufacturers schemes of pricing. Um, and this is dependent on uh, a quantity. So for example, you buy a quantity from Oh, wow, this is not straight at all. So this line, are you buying a quantity, of course, starting from one here, uh, from one, all the way, for example, to infinity. <laughs> of course, there is a limit. And there will be, most importantly, I'm concerned of this point here, which is a cut value or a cutoff value. And this cut value determines like it's a pivotal value and it determines in in terms of the quantity so this is the quantity cut and this determines the price before or less than or greater than so if the number of the or the quantity that you buy is less than less than the cut or if the quantity you buy is greater than the cut so this is what we are concerned of here having a price rule for this condition and the price rule for this condition usually to encourage uh, customers or clients in fact clients this is more b2b usually situations b2b situations bundling is b2c so this is why i like this kind of material for non-linear pricing we took an example for b2c as bundling and now an example of b2b so under this condition here the quantity bought is less than the quantity the cut value and over here or actually i'm not going to put it a quantity cut i'm just going to put it cut value to indicate that this is just um uh, for now easy to understand as a number so uh, what I wanted to say is that we want to encourage our clients to buy more. So we need to reduce the price as the quantity increases. So over here we say, let's take this example where we say the quantity cut, for example, is 1000 units, right? If you buy anything below 1000 units, we're going to charge you $10 per the unit. However, if you buy more than 1,000, then there will be two different schemes. Scheme number one, we say, all right, if you buy uh, more than 1,000, let me let me put in an, 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 I'm sorry, let me add here a nice new uh, slide so that I can have enough space to explain all. Oh. So the first scheme here, so I hope that you all understood. Here we have a cut value and here we have the cut value, let's say it is 1000, all right? And we have a scheme A and we have scheme B for, uh, uh, scheme A and scheme, uh, scheme B for uh, this uh, quantity uh, discount, all right? So the, the first, this first scheme is basically you say, if your quantity buy is less than cut, I will charge you $10 per unit. This is 1,000 units. If your quantity buy is greater than the cut then what happens is we're going to charge you for everything eight dollars all right let me put it in a different color 
So we're going to charge you for everything $8. And this is, we call it non-standard. The standard and, and uh, standard and more popular, and this is why it's a standard because it's more popular because it brings you hopefully more money, is the following: you have a cut value over here, which is let's say one thousand units, all right, and then you have again a quantity buy here is less than the cut, quantity buy here is greater than the cut. However, you say that the same rule applies. You say if the quantity um, if the quantity buys less than a cut, I'm you I'm gonna charge you ten dollars for the first one thousand units. And then what's going to happen is whatever quantity you purchase that is a greater than the cut will be charged differently. For example, $8. And this is usually the most common method. And this is why we call it the standardized method. All right. So again, sorry. So again, we have two methods for a quantity discount and both of them dependent on the cut value. And both of them have two conditions. Here is the quantity when buy is less than cut. And over here is the quantity when buy is greater than cut. If, if, for example, the cut value is 1,000 units, if you bought 1,200 units, on the stand standard method, how much you're going to uh, uh, pay if we charge you $10 for any unit below the cut, we charge you $8 after the cut. And how much is it for non-standard? Please do the calculations and come back to me. So first of all, the first 1,000 based on the standardized or standard method, the first 1,000 units, units will be multiplied by the $10. Then, the 1,000, of course, minus 1,200, the remaining units, which is basically here, 200 units, will be multiplied by the $8. And that would be the answer here. On the non-standard uh, method, what's going to happen is we're going to just multiply the total number of units, basically, by the $8. And that would be the difference. All right, so over here with the standard unit, you are getting discount on, on the number of units um, after the cut. And this is why it's a standard unit because you, you obviously you're making more money over here. <coughs> this is the most common method. The third thing that we are gonna cover is what's called the two-part tariff. The two-part tariff is like your Costco membership. You pay yearly membership to enter and buy uh, products from Costco. And, um, well, uh, no, it's not a two-part tariff. Costco, uh, yeah, you buy as you go. Um, let's talk about the, um, for example, the golf, golf clubs. So you pay a membership for the golf club and then you pay every time that you're using the club. So the cost of buying Q units is fixed and it charged K plus the, uh, 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 the, the, the dollars per unit purchased. So for example, you pay $500 to join a golf club and then $30 uh, 
um, per uh, round of goal, for example. So many companies are using this quantity discounts and two-part tariffs. And uh, there are some examples here in the slides, as you can see. And uh, it is basically uh, a way to incent to, to, make, to, to make companies buy more. Uh, it's like an incentive to buying more. Now, you can assume that consumer will choose an option um, giving her maximum non-negative for the surplus. And uh, non-negative surplus, yeah. So you can see that the non-linear pricing can often significantly increase your profits. And we will see in a practical example. So in this chapter, we're going to be introduced to a new concept. In bundling, we were in introduced to the consumer surplus. In this uh, chapter, I'm going to be introducing you to something called the consumer's willingness to pay for each unit of product. Students who took economics find this very easy. Students who haven't, I'll make it easy for you. So the willingness to pay for each unit of products could be extracted or information about this could be extracted from the demand curve. So we are back again to the demand curve. And I hope that demand curve wasn't a difficult topic for you. So we're going back again to it. So the willingness to pay curve is defined as the maximum amount a customer is willing to pay for each extra unit or each unit of a product. So let's take this example. Suppose that you want to sell a software for a big company, a Fortune 500 company, one of the big companies in the United States. Let quantity be denoted by Q, and that would be the number of copies of the software, of the program. Uh, and let's say that the demand is given by this formula over here. Quantity is equal 400 minus P. Then P would be uh, equal to the price charged for each software. Now, clearly your customer is willing to pay less for each additional unit of your software. This is their willingness. It's not, not when they are... We're not talking about situations where you were buying only two products or three products. We're talking about mass purchase you're right so put in mind that this kind of formulation and this kind of in, in, in it's yeah this kind of formulation within a context where we're talking about b2b and we're talking about mass uh, purchase all right okay so let's go ahead and talk about this willingness to purchase so let's take a look at this curve a little bit more closely p is equal to 400 minus q when q is equal to one you are willing or you want to purchase one unit then the price will be equal to 400 minus one which is 399 so basically you the price the maximum price you are willing to pay for this unit is 399 maximum the maximum the maximum so what would be uh, the minimum uh, if the maximum 399, uh, is it the maximum or the minimum? 399 would be the minimum, the minimum, the minimum. Uh, let me just make sure that 399 and here yeah it's 399 here's 400 if the quantity is zero it's 400 so this is the limit nothing over uh, 400 okay so uh, basically the the maximum maximum will be 399 that's tr that's correct so the max what I said is correct. So the max is a 399. So you, now you know the max. So what is the minimum? So at price 400, the demand is equal to zero. And the first unit cannot be worth 400 for sure. So at price of 399, however, the demand is equal to one unit. Therefore, the first unit must be worth somewhere between 
399 and 400 so this is why I was a little bit skeptical about the word max so it's gonna be in in between this and the bound the bound here is 400 so um, this is the willingness to pay is 399 but the price here could be between 399 and 400 anywhere in between So where did I get the max? I shouldn't say the max then. So guys, assuming that the customer is rational, the customer will pay for one unit only uh, for 400. Demand is zero. So the first unit cannot be 400. We all understand this, I hope for now. The price 399, however, is um, satisfying demand is equal to one. The unit here, the first unit must be worth somewhere between 399 and 400. How do I explain this? Mm. So if the price here is equal to, this is the willingness to pay. So the willingness to pay, which is the price is, mm. This is the price here by rewriting the formula. So if you guys remember here, Q was 400 minus P. So P will be equal 400 minus Q. And from this, we can extract the willingness to pay. So I think here, assuming that the customer is rational, the customer will pay a unit that only um, will cost uh, 399. However, for first unit must be worth somewhere between 399 and 400 because here is the demand zero and this is the, the bound. So the price should be anywhere in between. This is the theory here. Similarly, the price of 399, a customer does not purchase the second unit. However, if we uh, 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 substitute here 2, then 400 minus 2 will be 398. So the price of the second unit will be anywhere between 398 and 399. All right. However, the customer purchasing two units, of course, the price of the first unit will be somewhere between this and this. The price of the second unit, oh, the first unit will be here and here, and the price of the second unit will be between here and here. So this is, we call it the customer's willingness to pay for a unit of a product is often referred to as the unit's uh, uh, reservation price. So this is the willing, the price the customer is willing to pay. So this is the unit's uh, reservation price. So it can be shown now with mathematics that for um, the i unit purchased, the value here or the customer uh, is the, uh, by the customer, uh, the, the value here, the approximation here that makes the demand equal to i minus 0 0.5. So for example, by setting q equal to 0 0.5, not 1, then you will get the price as equal to 399.5. So here, over here. And over here will be 398.5. So, so you basically, um, at the first unit you say, 1 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5, 2 minus 0 0.5 is um, 1.5, 400 minus 1.5 will be 398.5 and so forth. Where is this whole formulation come from? This whole formulation come from your understanding of the integral. So if there's here a price and here's the quantity, 
um, integrate for example there is the demand curve somehow uh, demand curve is as something like that let's say so if you have an in if you want to find the price the cumulative price because the customer will buy 200 units so we need to give him the cumulative price all right so to find the cumulative price is the area under the curve this you took it in mathematics right so the area under the curve is the cumulative price for what for the number of units starting from unit equal one however the curve here never equal to zero uh, the unit always uh, approaching zero so um, having this approaching to zero the uh, minimum here we can start with is uh, when the quantity is 0 0.5 so this is where our formulation mathematically came from all right so it's never going to start with zero because it's approaching zero here the demand curve that is not linear so here is 0 0.5 and if you know that uh, if you remember from your high school that basically integration or the integral here is nothing but segmenting this area into smaller pieces based on on here the quantity so if the smaller one is 0 0.5 then the next one we're going to take it as an increment here uh, uh, a systematic increment that would be one unit of one unit every one unit so this will be 0 0.5 then it will be 1.5 then it will be 2.5 3.5 and so forth what does that mean this means for the first unit we will have 400 minus 0 0.5 plus because we are talking a cumulative right 400 minus uh, 1.5 so the sum of both of these will be uh, this will be 399.5 plus 398.5 and that will be equal to 0 10 18 10, 19, 7. So it will be equal to $798. So this is what we need to do to compute the uh, willingness to pay price, or what we called it over here, the reservation price. So I hope that I was able to explain where the 0 0.5 came from. This is mathematically what we are trying to do is we are trying to find a way to find the cumulative price not uh, um, not like this but like this in fact so in scientific papers and journal papers you'll find them using the integrals like this but we are not going to use the integrals because we're using excel so we're gonna use what is equivalent to the integral what's equivalent to the integral is basically your understanding of the integral itself integration is the area it's it's computing the area under the curve our curve here is not is approaching zero is not zero so here we're starting with 0 0.5 right even if it doesn't make sense here as a quantity so we're starting with 0 0.5 uh, in this uh, uh, reverse uh, 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 formula or equation and then we we uh, add or an increment of one unit and this is how we compute and then we keep on summing and accumulating the here 1.5 uh, 0 0.5 1.5 .5. if we are buying three units it will be 400 minus uh, 2.5 and then you do the computations so i hope that this video wasn't very difficult for you to understand we were uh, talking in it uh, we talked in this video about standardized and non-standardized um, uh, 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 quantity discount pricing with the standardized quantity discount which is the most common 
what we do is basically we uh, uh, compute the uh, revenue for all the units below the cut plus the revenue uh, of the, uh, the the number of units after the cut multiplied by the new price. With the non-standardized, which is usually not the case, we just multiply the total uh, uh, unit by its corresponding uh, price. Either if it's below 1,000, will be multiplied by $10. If it's if you buy more than 1,000, you multiply it by $8. Then we proceeded to talking about the demand curve again and the willingness to pay price. And the willingness to pay price is extracted from this formula of the uh, demand. So you reverse the positions. After you reverse the positions, we need to understand that in our Excel, now when we start working with Excel, you have unit one, two, three, four. But in fact, for this formulation, for the sake of this formulation, we're gonna start with 0 0.5, then 1.5. So basically we're gonna subtract 0 0.5 here, I minus 0 0.5, so that we can, uh, here, where is it? I minus, yeah, I minus 0 0.5, so that we can uh, uh, satisfy uh, 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 the conditions, the mathematical conditions here based on the integration because integration usually in general gives you the um, uh, the cumulative, all the area under the curve. So it gives you the cumulative from the first unit, the second unit, up to here, up to here, up to here, up to here, and so forth. All right, I'll see you on the next video then. Take care.